What's going on guys? Bringing you another video from up here at Grafton Archery. I'm pumped about today's video because this bow is one that's been near and dear to me for the last couple years, this model of bow. So keeping on with the Bible verse of the week, let me go ahead and bring you the Bible verse that I brought you on the last video. If you didn't see that video, go check it out. Um, but I'm trying to drop two videos a week, sticking with the same Bible verse, still studying on it, and uh, trying to figure out exactly what the true meaning of this verse is. But this verse comes from Proverbs 28, uh, and it's verse 1. The wicked flee when no one pursues, but the righteous are bold as a lion. Thought that was a cool verse. I thought that was a verse. I still think it's a verse that kind of goes along with what I stand for. So like I said, studying on it a little bit, you study on it as well. Comment down below with your interpretation of what that verse means. So without further ado, today's video is gonna be all about the brand new for 2024 Hoyt RX-8 Ultra. All right, guys, so like I said, this bow model from Hoyt has been near and dear to my heart because this is the bow, the RX-7 Ultra has been what I've shot for the last two years. So as you know, I like the bow. I like this length of bow. I like a lot of things about this bow, but I'm changing this year. Uh, and this won't be the bow that I'm shooting this year. No matter how much I like this bow, I've got to go to something shorter. Um, for backpacking for elk, as short as I am, I was dragging this bow, cams hitting the ground, getting hung on stuff on my backpack. So I am gonna be changing bows this year. Now, I don't think that's necessarily as big of an issue for the taller guys out there, and it may not be an issue for some of the shorter guys either, depending on what type of hunting you're doing, but it's something to consider. And for me, with this bow being like, this bow is even longer than last year's Ultra, and I think last year's Ultra from top and top of cam to the top of the other cam was like 38 or 39 inches. I mean, it was ridiculous. Um, so that's enough on that. Let's go ahead and talk about the specs and then I'll really get into what I like and dislike about the bow. So for specs, shoot, I didn't even change the axle to axle length. Bear with me a second, guys. Let me change this for you so you can uh, get the true measurements on this bow. All right, now we're ready. So for axle to axle on this bow, we're gonna have 34 and 11 sixteenths. So it's quite a bit, it's, it's longer than last year's bow. I don't remember, last year's bow was like right at 34, I believe. Um, this bow's slightly longer with a seven and a sixteenth brace height. So you're gonna have a long axle to axle and a very forgiving brace height. Should be a pretty shootable bow. Bow weight, like I said on my last video, I have been taking a scale and holding the bow, bare bow, uh, to check the weight against what Hoyt or all the manufacturers have been saying their bows weigh. I'm not gonna do that anymore. Everybody and their brother's doing that out there. If you really wanna see that, uh, you can check out one of their videos, but for myself, it's almost like a wasted metric. Um, so far, every bow that I've tested has been very close to what the manufacturer says it weighs because the manufacturers don't weigh them with a wrist and a shorty stabilizer and all that other stuff on them. Uh, they weigh them as bare as they can get them. Um, so what Hoyt's saying with nothing on this bow is 4.4 pounds. From what I checked earlier, uh, it seems pretty similar, pretty close. Draw weight, 40 to 80 pounds, but it's only in 10 pound increments. So say 40 to 50, 50 to 60, 60 to 70, and so on and so forth. Um, so know what you want when you buy the bow because if you don't and you say you buy a 40 to 50 and then eventually you are strong enough to shoot 60, you're not gonna be able to get it with that same set of lens and, and you're gonna have to change all that. So just keep that in mind. Speed, 332 feet a second is what this bow is rated at. It's gonna come with three mod options, 
Hoyt listened to, to the complaints over the last couple of years. They went back to a three mod system. Uh, now we've got 27 to 28 in this bow um, for your one base. So that's the base, that's what I'm in. I'm in the very shortest draw length that this bow will shoot. 28 and a quarter to 30 is gonna be your number two mod. And then your number three mod is gonna be 30 and, 30 and a quarter to 32. So for you really long draw guys, this may be a great option for you. Uh, still using the HBX Exact Cam. All their new bows have that HBX Exact Cam, all their new hunting bows. Um, and then let off 75, 80, and 85%, and that's adjustable on the mod, which is pretty sweet. Uh, one other thing about the HBX Exact Cam, they're calling it the Exact Cam because this is the first year where Hoyt has offered a cam that gives you quarter inch draw length adjustability which is huge. Uh, that's big for guys like myself that are generally between that set 27 and 27 and a quarter, um, but not quite a 27 and a half. It's gonna come in 14 color options. This is their new tombstone color, uh, which is pretty sweet. I like that gray color a lot. Uh, some new technology on this bow, no limb shocks. That is huge. I have lost my limb shock out of my bottom limb on my RX-7 Ultra, I don't know how many times, and I lost it eventually where I just never found it. So uh, I'm rocking no limb shock on the bottom of my bow right now. No riser shocks. That's another thing you'll notice that's different between the aluminums and the carbons. The aluminums still have the riser shocks, the carbons do not. The wire WRX strings and cables on these bows, the brand new proprietary strings and cables that Hoyt uh, is building now. Uh, if any of you guys have any experience with them, good or bad, please comment down below, let us know. <coughs> Excuse me. We're uh, definitely all interested to hear how well those strings and cables have been holding up for you guys. Uh, like I said, three different mod options. Hoyt is saying this year's bow is uh, a 30% reduction in shock. I can say these bows are extremely dead in the hand. That's 100% true. I don't know if it's quite 30%, maybe more than 30%. Uh, I don't have any way to test that, but I can tell you they're more dead than last year's bows. And a 40% reduction in noise. Once again, I still don't, I don't really have a great way to tell you whether there's a 40% reduction or not, but they are quieter. So. Uh, they're definitely heading in the right direction. These are a super quiet, um, very dead in the hand bow. The new spacer system. So this is one of the things that I really like about the way Hoyt went with their tunability. The new spacers for shimming their cams right and left. There's three options and they're color coded and they're aluminum. They're not plastic anymore. So I like that a lot. And then one of the biggest things that I really like is kind of a a quirky thing for me, but if you're like myself and you like to set the bow down on the ground, uh, <clears throat> a lot of times I'll set my cam in the dirt or it would slide off my boot into the dirt or on a rock or whatever. Well, now Hoyt's got on their top and bottom cam a, a foot. So when you set the bow down, you're actually setting it on that foot so you don't actually damage your strings and cables or your cam. It's kind of like a little sacrificial aluminum piece there with a little rubber ring on it that uh, just keeps your bow one, quiet, and two, it keeps you from beating your cam up in the dirt, which is a great addition to these bows this year. So that's pretty much it for specs. Let's go ahead and shoot this bow a few times and uh, then we'll get into what I like and dislike about the bow. One thing about it is this bow is super smooth. Great back wall, little bit of sponge in it compared to the shorter bows. Sorry about the noise. If you're hearing something, it's the train outside. But let's go ahead and see if this bow passes the letdown check. Not bad. Right there's where it drops off and that's all it's got. Little bit of shock in the hand, but very, very little, and it dissipates extremely quick. Like I said, extremely smooth draw on these bows. Let's see how it balances. Bow balances good. It's 
Let's get you one more shot. And then we'll talk about some things on this bow. Watch that cycle boom. That's all you got for the bow to doing any kind of drop off on the back back side. Right. There, that's all it is. Like I said, back wall is super stiff from what Hoyt's had in the past. All right, so that lets you see the bow in action a few times. Very quiet, very dead in the hand. So let's talk about uh, how I scored this bow and I'll put my scores up there and go from there. All right, so For shootability, I'm gonna give this bow a nine. Tunability, give this bow a seven. Draw cycle, giving this bow a nine. Noise and vibration, uh, that's a hard one. I'm still gonna give this bow a seven. Uh, on par with the um, 33, but not quite as dead in the hand as the shorter axle to axle bows, which is pretty much to be expected. Speed, giving this bow a seven. Balance, giving this bow an eight. Back wall, a seven. Weight, a seven. And fit and finish, a nine. And then for price, big old goose egg. That adds up to a total score of 70 points. All right, so let's talk about some things. Shootability, bow's got a really long are gener very generous axle to axle length and brace height. Um, I think this bow is gonna be an extremely shootable bow, especially for you longer draw length guys. Tunability, gonna stay with the seven. All the Hoyts this year are given a seven because they all have the same tunability uh, as far as the way you can tune them, adjust your draw length, your let off, your um, back wall, and then first and foremost, being able to shim your cams back and forth. Um, yes, you do have to use a press. You guys know how I feel about um, my tunability on my bows and how I like them to be as simple as possible because the less moving parts you have, the less possibilities of issues you're gonna have in the back country. So tunability is seven, draw cycle a nine. Uh, this bow has a very, very nice draw cycle and even into the longer draw lengths, the bow maintains the great uh, smooth draw cycle that it does at the shorter draw lengths. Noise and vibration, it does have some hand shock. It's very quiet. Um, I really think it's just maybe ever so slightly quieter than the um, Alpha X33 but it's pretty, it's, it's, so, it's so close that it's hard to even change scores. I'm gonna give it a seven. Speed, giving it a seven. Let's talk about the speeds that I got out of this bow. So 70 pounds, 27 inch draw, 350 grain, 425 grain, and 513 grain arrows. I got 288, 268, and 245. At 30 inch draw length, I got 322, 295, and 272. So I gave this bow a seven, just like I did the Alpha X33, but for a different reason. So I got higher speeds at 30 inch draw out of this bow than I did the Alpha X33, but I got slower speeds by about 10, 11 feet a second out of this bow at 27 than I did at the, on the Alpha X33. Reason behind that is, like I said, guys, this makes a huge difference. The mod options make a huge difference based on where your draw length lays out. So on the Alpha X 33, the 30 inch was not the top of one of the mods, but 27 was. It flip-flopped on, on the RX-8 and 30 inches is top of the number two and 27 inches is bottom of the number one. So that's why the speeds have differed here and that's something definitely to keep in mind when you're picking out a bow. So let's go ahead and talk about balance. The bow balances very well in my hand. I, I like the way these carbon bows balance. It's gonna be definitely personal preference, but I like the way they balance. Back wall, it's a little bit of sponge to it compared to some of the shorter axle to axle bows. 
that's to be expected, but it's definitely a very, very stiff back wall compared to last year's RX-7 Ultra. Weight, given this BOA 7, it's not really that light. It's pretty much on par with other 33 inch aluminum bows. It's a little bit lighter and it is a 34 inch, a little over 34 inch bow. So that's also to keep in mind. So that's why I gave it a seven because it is above average on or below average on weight, uh, on total weight, but it's not a very, it's not an extremely light bow. So giving this bow a seven. Fit and finish, Hoyt's got it nailed on the carbon bows giving them a nine and price big old goose egg because this bow is ridiculous it's almost nineteen hundred dollars um, depending on where you're at it may be more than nineteen hundred dollars so giving this bow a zero and that's going to bring your total to 70 points if you'll notice on these carbon bows a lot of times they're actually scoring higher in the normal score uh, normal categories than some of the aluminum bows but then this price brings the total score down. The reason I did that is because that's a way I've found to kind of justify, is it worth the extra six or $700 for a carbon bow? And oftentimes it's not, sometimes it is. It really just depends on where you're at and what you can afford. Um, I do prefer the carbons, generally speaking, because they're warmer to the touch in cold weather. They're quieter if you bump into something. They're strong, they're rigid. Um, there's a lot of benefits to carbon, but a lot of times it's not worth that price difference. Sometimes it is, sometimes it's not. So that's up for you to decide. But like I said, I gave this bow a total of 70 points. So things that I really like about this bow, um, the back wall is great for this long of a bow and the fact that it's a carbon bow and still has very little hand shock is super nice, super quiet. I like the look of the bow. Um, they definitely widen the limbs from last year. And I really, really like the foot, the cam foot on, these, on this bow or on all the Hoyts uh, and the quarter inch draw length adjustability. Those are probably the biggest ones for me. As far as the riser goes and new technology and stuff on the riser, there's really nothing there. Uh, you're still gonna have the dovetail on the back for your rest. You're still gonna have your uh, Picatinny mount on the front for your sight. Still gonna be able to run your lower stabilizers, same as last year. Uh, other than really the cam, this cam is phenomenal. Um, great bow, I think it's gonna be a great option for you guys that have a really long draw length, or for you guys that just really like a long axle to axle carbon bow. This is gonna be a great option for you. So, like I always say guys, if you have any questions for me, please don't hesitate to comment down below. If you have any critiques or you want to see something different comment down below guys i'm always up for some constructive criticism just keep it tasteful always remember that i'm not a professional i don't do this full time i have a job in the military all you know full time outside of here um, so i'm just trying to bring you some good content bring you some uh, good videos with some great information for you guys to build off of and to go find a great new bow or used bow for this year. Uh, anyway, like I say, if you got any questions, call these guys up here at Grafton Archery at 704-855-1300 or come up here and visit them. Uh, they're here in China Grove, just down the road from my house and uh, they're a great shop. So like always guys, like and subscribe. Please continue to watch my content and comment down below. Remember to live your life to the fullest and use your passions to bless others. We'll catch you on the next one.